today I am outside of Skolomance. This is the next edition of Farming Classic Dungeons to see which one has the highest gold per hour. This is quite a fun dungeon to farm. I like it a lot. Um, make sure you stay around to the end. I'm going to show you what makes this so, f or just skip ahead if you want to see it. What makes this so good is that there's a hidden vendor um, nearby that a lot of people don't know about. Which means you can go out and vendor all of your trash, hop back in, and just keep running this over and over and over. Now, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe uh, if you enjoy the content. And let me know in the comments if there's other types of dungeons or other types of solo content you'd like to see. I enjoy soloing things in uh, Classic a lot just because it's something that I can do anytime. I don't have to wait for a group to get together or anything like that. Um, and I've got a pretty irregular play schedule. So, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and buff up Seal of Command for the Cleave, Blessing of Sanctuary for the little extra stats, plus... Um, Oh, let me start this timer here. There we go. Uh, plus, in addition to the stats, I get a nice little uh, refund in mana anytime I block or parry or dodge. These four units here, you might think you don't want to kill them right off the gates because you can open this little thing here and just move down with them aggro to you, but they each have a knockdown um, that they use very frequently. They're very liberal with the knockdown, and it's incredibly obnoxious. Um, trying to clear this room while you're constantly running around getting knocked down. So I just take him out right there, and I want to keep her aggroed uh, as much as I can. Now, the Blood Steward has a Paralyze, and so I like to take her out as soon as possible so I don't get paralyzed, and then go through here and kill everyone else. So I got the Blood Steward. Get a couple more of these guys here. And then there's some easy line of sights with the bookshelves. Oh, I got crippled or something else. Uh, the other thing I should do is I'm going to turn on my shadow resistance aura. And then I'm going to line of sight with this bookshelf first. Bring over those couple of little mages that were standing on the side. And then I'm going to move over into this group here while I aggro the skeleton. Most of these people being casters makes it really easy to take out the room. Shadow resistance aura plus being a higher level means... They rarely hit you with any of their abilities. Sometimes I get hit with one. You can see here I'm getting knocked down by a couple of units now. And let me clear this group up. Oh, in fact, I'm getting the debuff knocked down. That's strange. I've not been on this group for very long, and for whatever reason, uh, Blizzard thinks that I deserve to get the knockdown where I cannot avoid it. And it happens every time I get auto-attacked. That's okay. I'll just take them all out. And there we go. So a couple minutes in, the first room is cleared. Now there are a few things that make this uh, a really high gold per hour farm. It's actually, I think it's going to be the highest gold per hour of any classic dungeon. I might be wrong on that, but I think it's going to be the highest gold per hour. The first one is the cloth drops here are huge. Almost every unit here has a chance to drop cloth. Uh, so there are a ton of options for, or a ton of uh, gold that gets dropped just in collecting the rune cloth. Um, other than that, there are BOE blue drops that happen pretty frequently for the tier zero sets, which are kind of collector-ish items right now. So you're not going to get paid a ton for them because it's not like people need the items, but they like them to finish off their collector sets. Um, and so make sure you hang on to those rather than disenchanting them. Now in this room, there are a, some summoners that will continue to summon skeletons if you don't take them out. Sometimes I try to take them out right away. Other times I just round it all up. And there's a little spot you can line of sight everybody over here. And you can just hit him with an AoE. And I think I got everybody but this group. Okay, so I'm going to come down here now to this chandelier, move behind the corner, drop my consecration, throw off a holy wrath, and then let's give him a nice little serenite bomb. And that should more or less take out the group. And then I'm going to move up. As I'm finishing off the group, I'm moving back up to take out these summoners because they, they will just indefinitely summon little skeleton minions to uh, attack rather than 
casting other abilities or coming and attacking you themselves. And the skeletons all uh, despawn once the summoner's dead, uh, so it's not that big of a deal. Did I miss a summoner? I did. And then typically from here what I'm going to do is come down and light this brazier. From the first room you should have picked up a Blood of the Innocents which lets you light that. It takes a long time for this dude to fly over. He's a little, he's one of the first bosses. It takes a while for him to fly over. Uh, so while he's flying, I start looting all these corpses. And then make sure you keep the corpses within this gate because when he gets here the gate will close on you and you don't want to be on the other side of it, otherwise you can't fight him. There he is. And you see here, the gate is now closed, so I'm in here with him, which is good. Take him out real quick. Uh, get a couple of uh, bind on pickup blue items, which uh, the bind on pickup blue items start adding up quick in these level 50 dungeons. Uh, each uh, each one goes for a few to several gold apiece, and so it gives quite a bit of raw gold. Now if you're coming through here as an enchanter, maybe you disenchant them and get more gold. I'm not actually sure if the blue items would end up netting you more gold uh, disenchanted or not. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they do. Green items almost always are going to net you more disenchant value than what you'd get otherwise. Now this room, pretty typical clear, just going to gather up the whole thing, um, and then I'll show you a nice little line of sight trick to make sure you get as many of the, oh I'm silenced, I forget, some of these guys have a silence, and so if you get silenced it is a little bit obnoxious but not a big deal. And in here I'm going to switch into Retribution Aura as soon as I can, and I'm going to jump into this little bookshelf cope because it makes all of the casters come up to me. Uh, perfectly line of sights everybody so I won't that way I don't have to worry about um, worry about all the casters running away or being far away I can AOE them with everybody else as long as I get out of these silences okay there we go switch to retribution aura get the consecration down and let's get the rest of these guys down now there are a couple times where this gets a little spooky with your health um, I mean 6,000 health would probably be considered full health if I was actually level 50, I don't know, 4, 55, or whatever level you come through here. So it's not that big of a deal, um, unless you start getting the knockdown debuff, where everything knocks you down no matter what. Let's see, I think that's everyone though. Um, then it can get a little spooky, but if you feel like you need it, just throw down a lay on of hands to reset your health. And going through and looting. Yeah, so the things that are big here, uh, the BOE blues, uh, just the item level in general being higher makes it easy for, to vendor trash and get quite a bit of gold. Um, the dark runes are another big one. Dark runes will sometimes sell for five or six gold a piece. I usually sell mine for uh, three gold a piece just to make sure they sell fast. And then recipes. I think I just picked up a recipe that's worth quite a bit, a mooncloth bag recipe. There we go. I'm going to top off my health real quick here. Um, yeah, the Mooncloth bag recipe sells for quite a bit. And so that when all of those things add up, it ends up being just an absolutely insane gold run. Now this room is a little bit uh, different than you might expect. I'm actually not going to bother... Uh, oops, missed one here. Taking these guys out yet. I'm aggroing all of them, and then I'm dropping down. And what's going to happen here is all of them are going to chase me down here. They're going to run down the stairs, which gives me some time to gather this room up. Um, and then I can fight this room and the dragons all at the same time in one big, nice AoE fest. And you can see they should be coming down. Oh, I've got them on me already. Some of them, at least. Let's grab this guy, and I'm just going to start blowing them up because I'm getting kind of low on health. In fact, I'll probably use my lay on hands here. Just reset my health, make this run a little faster. You know, it actually looks like a lot of those dragons might have reset, which happens sometimes, but it is pretty rare. Normally they follow you down and you don't have to worry about um, the resets. 
but it looks like a lot of them reset. Otherwise, there would have been quite a bit more coming down these stairs here. So I'll get them on the way up. Either way, it's still good to come drop down to this room first. That way you don't have to run through the dragon room twice and waste time. You can just do it one time. Uh, there is another boss down here. If you are a paladin or a warlock, you can go talk to your trainer to get the item which lets you summon the boss down here for your mount quest. I don't think it's worth it. I think it's uh, a little inefficient if you're going for gold per hour. But if you want to come down just to kill them, find some fun items that you can't find elsewhere, then that's great. Yeah, so you can see there's a little pile of dragons. Oh, maybe they did all come down. So I see the, the handlers too. Oh, I missed one guy right back here though. This is worth going back and picking up. Um, the reason why is all of these guys have a chance to drop recipes, BOE blues, and dark moon cards, and any one of those um, will just exponentially increase the amount of gold per hour that you're getting. So if I miss a single unit, I'll typically go back and try to get them. And it looks like I cleared out most of this room. There are a couple of dragons that did not follow me down. So I'll do what I can to grab these dragons up into a little pile, take them down, and then head into the next area. I'm just over 10 minutes now. That's pretty good. Good pace for this, uh, this dungeon. Um, one more place I'm going to go before coming down into this uh, area where you normally finish the dungeon is back over here. This door is another secret area. If you walk towards it, it just opens up and reveals a new room with a whole bunch of um, undead mobs in it. And there's one more boss in the back. But another important piece about it is there's a hidden torch uh, lever on one of the walls. So on one of the walls, there's a little torch sitting there that when you hit it, it opens up a special gate that lets you access the... Uh, I think it's called Old Treasure Chest or something like that. So you can access the Old Treasure Chest, which gives you generally two BOE green items. Um, if you get lucky, you might get a BOE blue item, but usually it's just going to be a BOE green item. Still well worth coming down here just for the cloth and the green items that get dropped down here. But if you happen to get a nice BOP blue or BOE green item from that um, area, then that makes it all the more worth it. So here's the boss we're talking about. I'm going to come in here, quickly drop some AoEs, and I like to kill uh, Jandis Barov quickly because if I don't, she's going to turn into a million little apparitions, and it takes a lot longer to clear if she does, but got her down fast enough this time that that didn't happen. And a lot of these uh, corpses, when you kill them the first time, they'll sit on the ground as a targetable character until they get back up and you have to kill them a second time. So usually after I think I've got everything down, I'm just going to start looting and maybe uh, cleansing myself if I've got some uh, poison debuffs on me or something like that. And then I'll finish up the looting again once all the gas clouds have dispersed and all of the corpses who would have gotten back up are dead for the second time. And I've got just a nice shiny pile in here of all sorts of loot. Most of this is just going to be some bone fragments and some cloth. Get an occasional green. We'll go get uh, her loot real quick. Get a nice BOP blue. And then I'll show you right after this where the hidden uh, torch is. So that you can make sure to hit that anytime you're running this. Grab those two extra BOE green items or if you get real lucky a BOE blue item. The BOE blue items, some of them might actually be best in slot for um, for level 59 twinks, which could make them worth quite a bit. This is it here. That's the torch. Pull the torch, and now you can uh, go access the old treasure chest that uh, the Barrow family left behind when they sold themselves out to Kel'Thuzad. So the, the history of this place is actually kind of cool. Um, Kel'Thuzad, I believe, was the first one who started uh, talking with the Barrow family and he promised them you know, immortality and whatever else if they would join him and help him and then he basically just betrayed them and turned them all into his servants. But uh, that is why this... Oh, and then, and then this got turned into a school for necromancy. 
So if you think of the name Skolo Mance divided into a few different skull for school O of Mance, Necromancy, it's School of Necromancy, Skolomance. This is where the hidden chest is. If you don't pull that torch, that little uh, grate in front of it will be down and you will. there's no way to pickpocket it or pick the lock or blow it open or anything like that. Um, so you have to go hit that torch. Otherwise, you're out of luck. And while I'm waiting for that gas cloud to disperse, I'll come in here and grab that. So you see nice uh, BOE items, two of them, and now I can finish my looting and then be on the way to the last couple of sections. This next room that I'm moving through, the viewing room, not going to attack anybody in here. It's not worth it. They don't drop any loot. Sometimes the bosses drop loot, but it's rare. All of these minions will attack you if you hit any of these two bosses up here. So it's not worth the time to kill everyone in here just for a potential drop from one of those bosses. Run straight through, come down into the basement where Raz is, and we're going to take out Raz and a couple of... Uh, there's a couple of other packs of guys down here, and then we'll move into the last section of this dungeon. And where is Raz? Oh, he's way back there. Holy cow. Come here, Raz. I like to just fire my rocket at him. Makes it so I don't have to run as far. I can keep all these guys together. Um, drop a little consecration. And then once I get everybody here, I'm going to focus on Raz uh, for primarily the reason that he can put me in an ice block. Those knockbacks and slows are kind of obnoxious, but the big thing that I'm avoiding is I don't want to be put into an ice block for several seconds uh, because it slows down the clear time quite a bit. There we go, a couple of uh, BOP blue items. He does have a chance to drop an epic item, or maybe there's two epic items. Oh my gosh. What did I just pick up? <laughs> I did not know there was a BOE epic item in here. Holy cow. Elemental Mage Staff. 20 fire resistance, 20 frost resistance. Increased spell power by 29. Holy cow, that's cool. Um, looks like it doesn't sell for all that much. 50 gold maybe if I'm lucky. But still, that was, that was surprising. I was not expecting that at all. Literally, as I'm talking about the fact that Raz has a chance to drop a bind on pickup epic, I get the elemental mage staff. How fun. <laughs> oh, what a good time. Sometimes playing World of Warcraft is like opening up packs of Pokemon cards. And you just get that little hit where, you know, what what's going to happen next. That used to be one of my favorite things. I loved, my mom used to uh, bribe me when I was a little kid. She'd say, go weed the yard or go do some extra chores. And if you do it, she had this little like uh, like a reward, like a bounty board type thing where it's like, if you do this, then you can get a pack of Pokemon cards. You can get two packs of Pokemon cards if you really wanted it done. So my friends and I, uh, I don't know how old we were, eight or nine or 10 years old, maybe a little older, 12. I don't know how old we were, but probably not quite 12. It's probably like fifth, fourth grade. So 10, 11, 12. But we would go to the bounty board find the easiest things to do to get our packs of Pokemon cards and anybody who's ever opened a package of Pokemon cards knows the hit that I'm talking about like I've never done drugs but I can imagine what doing drugs would be like because you open that pack of cards and you get that fresh smell of like oh my gosh this is a brand new pack of Pokemon cards and then you start thumbing through and saying like oh what's what's gonna am I gonna get a holographic am I gonna get a Charizard like what is going on here um, it's just fun. Alright, next group of people here. These six mini-bosses uh, sometimes drop uh, bind-on-pickup uh, blues. They don't always drop it. They also have a pretty high chance of dropping dark runes, which sell for, sell for a few gold apiece. Um, I've tried kiting them in between rooms, but I found it's actually kind of inefficient. Uh, because if you're not attacking them fast enough, they will reset... Uh, and if they reset, you've got to just run back into the other room and kill them again anyway. And if they don't reset, then oftentimes you're stringing out a corpse or a line of corpses that you have to go back and loot anyway. So I just take it one room at a time. If you really want to min-max this, I'm sure you could find out a really efficient way 
I guess I can't jump over right there. A really efficient way to um, move them from room to room, but it, I think this is pretty fast as is, so I'm going to move over here for a nice little line of sight. And, oh, that's not, there. where's the lady? Ah, shoot, there it is, instructor. So she has a heal, which is why I want to take her down first. Make sure she's not healing the rest of these people. And then these shades are immune to physical damage. They can only be taken out by uh, magic damage. Oh, come on, let's get her. Oh, that's just unfortunate. Okay. So, um, if you only have a lot of physical damage, you might have a little trouble there. But let's see if we can get any more Pokemon cards. Holy cow. I feel like I just opened a new pack of Pokemon cards with that drop. That's nice. Hey, Shadowcraft Bracers. So these BOE Blues, um, they, they sell 10 to 20 gold a piece, sometimes 30 or 40. They're kind of collector items now for the people who want to collect all the different sets of armor for their class but don't want to go and run all these dungeons themselves. So that's why they have a little bit of a higher price point on them than you, than you would expect. Um... This is one group that I have gotten okay at kiting from one room to the other. But again, it's not its not like a super good kite. Oops, I stunned them all, I think. Because you see here, these skeletons are already dropping dead, and so I'd have to come back into here to loot the skeletons anyway. So then I just end up taking out the entire group. Blood mail gauntlets. And let's get these guys. I think I can get these guys to follow me through. Let's let's see if I can, can get this one and the next group all together. Nope, he's got a little knockdown, so he stopped me in place. I'll bring him out here. That'll shave off in a couple seconds, I guess. Getting him just a little bit closer before I take down the group. And, oh, I think I actually need that for, speaking of collector set, I don't remember, no, it's the Sabatons. I don't have the Death Bone Sabatons yet. But you can see I'm just over 21 minutes now. Um, pretty dang fast run, especially considering what gets dropped in here. Oh, that was not the lady I wanted. That's who I want. And once you finish up this last group, then the end boss will appear. And we'll count that as the run. There we go. School is in session, he says. Get rid of those skins of shadow now. And my goal is generally to, to see if I can kill him before he transports me into one of the rooms. It uh, makes it just a little bit faster if you can do that. A lot of times he'll transport me just one time. I had once where he actually uh, hit me twice. There we go. And he's down. Light Forge Helm. And let's head back out. I'm not stopping the timer yet. I usually stop the timer once I get to the beginning of the dungeon. Because if I'm running this multiple times, that would be technically how long it takes to go out, reset the dungeon, and come back in. So if I want a true gold per hour, I'm going to move all the way out of the dungeon. Um, before resetting the timer. Looks like I missed one unit down there. That's too bad. But at this point, not worth going back for. And you can see the bags fill up quite a bit. Um, sometimes you can get two runs before you have to go out and, and sell to the uh, hidden vendor out there, but looks like this time if I did two, I'd be running out of space. So I'd say just every run, go and vendor... If you have a, if you're doing just a raw gold run, obviously just vendor everything. If you've got a little uh, moly, then you can use that to. Um, oh, he's right here. Let's kill him real quick. Then you can use the moly to uh, access your mailbox. There we go. 19 more silver. Look at that. Maybe it wasn't worth it, but if he had dropped a, I don't know. Staff of Jordan or something like that. Everyone would say it's worth it. Okay, I'm going to stop this. Uh, we'll, we'll call this 23 minutes and 30 seconds for the run. Uh, that should get me to the end of the dungeon. So pause that right there, right before I exit the dungeon. And let me show you now where this hidden uh, vendor is. Oh, come on, let's get the torch. So the first thing that you need is this 
uh, trinket, a spectral essence. If you don't have one, it's no big deal. Come and talk to this lady here and say, hey, I've lost my spectral essence. I need another one. She'll give you one. And you can see here it is in my inventory again. If you haven't done the quest line for it, that's okay. The quest line is not too bad. Um, just do the quest line and then you can get the spectral essence and come talk to these folks. So you'll notice uh, once I equip it, there's all these ghosts that start appearing around here. And in the blacksmith's hut, we have a vendor that sells some recipes. Um, and then uh, you can also, they're all, I think they're all bind on pickup though. And then you can also vendor to him. So let me start calculating my gold per hour. Um, let's see, I had, yeah, there it is. I had written down how much I had before. So I'm going to vendor this all to him and then, or anything I'm not going to be auctioning, auctioning. And then I will tell you what the gold per hour is. And I'm actually counting this towards the gold per hour, probably as 30 gold, um, because it's very common that that or, a, I mean, not an epic, but something around 30 gold of value will drop, such as a recipe um, or something like that, that you can sell for uh, quite a bit on the auction house to, to bump that gold per hour up. And as, as I'm doing this, you can see I've got just a ton of cloth. Okay, and a good number of BOE green items too. Mooncloth bag, that's a great example of one. Uh, Major Spear, I don't think this actually sells for 24 gold. Maybe if I held off on a long time and waited until no one else was selling and someone really needed it or a collector wanted it, I could sell it for that much, but I'm going to count it as maybe like 5 or 10 gold. Uh, Book of the Wild, these I found just don't sell well, so I vendor them. I've tried putting them on the auction house even for 2 or 3 gold, and it doesn't it just doesn't do anything. So now I'm at uh, 16,900 and we'll call it 927 gold. So 16,927. And that means my raw gold was 86.1 gold. So just from picking up silver in there, vendoring all that, I made 86 gold. And now let's organize everything else. So let me start with the rune cloth here. While I'm doing this, I'm going to back up and re-equip my trinket so I don't accidentally vendor it later. Um, putting all the rune cloth up here, you can see I've got, what is that, 12, just over 13, just over 13 stacks of rune cloth. Crazy amount of rune cloth. Then over here, I'm going to put anything else that I'll be putting on the auction house. Uh, and then I'll organize my uh, disenchants up over here. The other thing that you might want to be careful of, and I'm actually not sure what to look for here. I'd probably have to look it up. Oh, it looks like uh, get 45 more silver there. But some of these green items might be best in slot for a level 59 twink. I'm not 100% sure again where the, where the best in slot ones drop or what to look for for that so um, take that with a grain of salt but if you know what you're looking for there might be a twink item in here I don't think there is I don't know maybe that is a plate strength and intellect it says market price on that is 29 gold so I don't know I'll hold off on that for a minute I'm gonna count it I'm gonna count this towards the gold per hour as if it's a disenchant um, and then I'll, I'll actually see if I can sell it on the auction house but for this video I'll count it as a disenchant. So let's add this up. Four gold each here, so 16, 32, 48, uh, 52, call that 53 gold in cloth. So rune cloth was 53 gold. Then I've got moon cloth bag. I'm going to say that I'm going to put that for half price to make sure it sells fast. So 20 gold there. I think I could sell that for maybe three or four gold. So call it 24 gold for recipes. Uh, another common one to get here is the life stealing enchant. This, I like to sell these for four, three or four gold a piece, so I'll call that four, 16 gold for the dark runes. Now I'm surprised there are no aquamarine. Aquamarine drops a lot in here. I didn't get any. That's okay. Shadowcraft, uh, 20 gold. I'd sell that for 15, so BOE blue. I got one. Oh, actually, I'm going to count this as a BOE blue because it is. So I'll count that. I'm going to say that would probably sell for 30 gold, uh, more as a collector's item. And then another 15 there, so 45 gold on BOE Blues. 
green items here. Let's see, disenchant value, four gold, uh, seven gold, seven gold, four, 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 seven, seven, uh, four. So we'll call it an average of five gold per uh, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65 gold in disenchant value there. Uh, didn't get any aquamarines. Essence of Undeath. We've got six gold worth of Essence of Undeath. Um, and then Bone Fragments, Crypt Fiend Parts. This is usually one gold per ten. So that's seven gold right there. And that is everything. So that brings me to a grand total, this run, a grand total of 302 gold. Um, and now you can see my timer again. I did this in just under 24 minutes, which means you get roughly two and a half or maybe two and a third. We'll call it two and a third runs per hour. Uh, so if I multiply that out by 2.3, that gives me 695 gold per hour, almost 700 gold per hour just for running Skullamance. By far the best gold run of anything I've ever done. I don't think that anything else is going to beat this. I've got a few more to do, but this to me so far represents the absolute best gold per hour. And maybe you get lucky again with like a dark moon card that's worth several hundred gold um, or some other drop that's worth 50, 100 gold, kind of like what we saw here with the elemental mage staff. Thanks for tuning in again. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if there's anything else you'd like to see and I'll catch you on the next farm.